Hey guys, welcome back to Explore Electronics Plus. This video is about design and verification of ALU, that is arithmetic and logical unit. Let us understand how we are going to design this using Verilog, and also let us verify this the functionality of this ALU using UVM test bench further. So, if you look at the block diagram of ALU here, we will be having seven down to zero A, that is A will be a eight bit value, and we have seven down to zero B. That is B is also a 8-bit value. I Means since it is a 8-bit ALU, it will operate on 8-bit values. So we declared it as a vector 7 down to 0 in our Verilog code. And we need to have a ALU control over here so that we can control the different operations of ALU. Means suppose if we give ALU control as 0000, it will perform addition. Similarly, 0001, it will perform subtraction. So depending on the ALU control values, we will be telling the ALU to perform different operations. Since we have some 8 values over here for ALU control, we can perform 8 operations. You can also increase it further to have other logic as well. So you can have division, you can have modulus, you can have other logic gates as well. Here NAND and XNAR, those are all not covered, even NOT is not covered. You can increase it further, ALU control can be extended till 1111 and 16 different operations we can perform. And that is about a 4-bit ALU control. Then I have taken result as 16-bit, you can see 15 down to 0 ALU result. Why? Because here we are performing multiplication as well. Addition gives us the result, even if you add 8-bit plus 8-bit, it will be resulting in 8-bit result as a sum plus 1-bit carry. So we can easily manage addition with one bit extra. But multiplication require double the size of the input size what we are going to give. Means if you are doing 8 into 8 bit multiplication, it will be resulting in 16 bit. So I am taken here the maximum size required for the ALU result. You can also restrict for other operations as 7 down to 0 in your code. So let us look into the Verilog design of this 8 bit ALU how actually we can implement it. Here is the design of ALU, 8-bit uh, ALU. Module ALU is the name of my module. Input 7 down to 0 A is 8-bit input A. Input 7 down to 0 B, this is 8-bit input B. And then I have an ALU control as I said, it is 3 down to 0. That means a 4-bit control signal to select the operation of ALU. Then 15 is to 0 of ALU result that is a 16-bit result we are going to get after the computation of different operations. So the logic to cal calculate or to perform different operations is taken over here. Always at the red star. Here star indicating that we are adding all the inputs over here into the sensitivity list. That gives a meaning of star here. Other than that also you can write it as a comma b comma a ALU control in place of star. Then comes the case statement. Here case statement is suitable, why because we have a different case of inputs like ALU control will be having 0, 0, 0, 0 to 1, 0, 0, 0. So all these will be considered as different cases and for each and every ALU control value we will be performing certain operation. So case ALU control, if it is 4 tick B 0, 0, 0, 0 colon ALU result will be equal to A plus B. It means for 4 zeros of ALU control we will be performing A plus B. When the ALU control is 1, we will be performing subtraction and the result will be assigned to ALU result. Similarly, 0, 0, 1, 0 corresponds to logical AND operation, bitwise AND operation. So A and B. This symbol of ampersand indicate bitwise AND operation between A and B. Similarly, I am performing uh, R operation as well between A and A or B. Uh, that is with a opcode or ALU control 0, 0, 1, 1. So 0100 is for XR, 0101 is for NOR gate, NOR gate can be implemented by using NOT of A or B and 0110 is for shifting left, this is the shift operator in Verilog, this will shift the value of A by 1 bit to the left side. If you want to shift it 2 bits to the left side, you can put a value 2 over here and depending on the number of shifts we require, we can select the number and put it over here. Similarly, we can do the right shift as well. You can see A right shift by 1 bit. Just I am doing it by 1 bit. You can increase it to any number of shift 
as you require. Then the last one is one triple zero will be my multiplication. So when you give ALU control as one triple zero as opcode, ALU result will be equal to A into B. This results in 16 bit value. So I have taken 15 down to zero. And by default, if any of these as ALU control is not given, suppose if you are given as 1111, it is not mentioned it over here. So default statement will be executed and ALU result is completely zero. This is about a design of 8 bit ALU. Why we call it as 8 bit ALU means it is operating on the 8 bit values A, B. Now let me take you to the code in EDA playground and also I have a test bench over there. We can see that. So here if you observe at my right, I have a design code which I have explained so far and I have added a extra output here called zero output reg zero. Remember output should be a register when we are operating with a behavioral coding here. Since we are using always and the output ALU result should be a register. And also I have one more output called zero here. This is just a flag indicating whenever the ALU result is zero uh, because of this condition. Since it is a four bit control signal, but we'll be utilizing only eight such values, we can go up to 16 values, right? That's why if, if because of any randomization, if we get any other value other than these, these control signals, we will be getting the result as zero. So to indicate that to a outside world, I have a zero flag as a output of the ALU. This will be set to one when ALU result is zero. This is about the design code. So if you, if you look at the test bench, I have written using UVM. We require all these modules like starting from UVM package importing and then including the UVM macros. Then ALU interface is required, ALU transaction, ALU sequence to generate the stimulus. Then we need to drive the inputs to the DUT from driver and then to capture those and comparing, I am using a monitor here. Then we have agent and environment to contain agent inside and agent containing driver, sequencer and monitor. And then after environment at the top, we will be having ALU test as a UVM component. So this is the test bench top here. Just I am instantiating ALU and my interface and also I am setting my interface into a config DB here with a key VIF and I am uh, having a handle of interface as VIF. And also I am starting the UVM test here. You can see ALU test. Here is my ALU test. This is my test. I am running here and that is what I need to trigger it from here. And also for a for seeing a waveform over here, I will be using, I am dumping the waveform file that is dump.vcd and dump files. So this is the top test bench. Then we need to understand all these things. So let us understand all these things related to the UVM components in the next video. So we will be getting the result for this particular ALU test like this. We will be giving the values as A, B and after shifting, you can see this is the result. Similarly, uh, you can see this is the result for the AND operation. I am taking only 8 bit A, 8 bit B as well as result is 8 bit. The other bits we can truncate. Similarly, subtraction it is doing perfectly. Similarly, the right shift and then multiplication also we are going to get uh, with 16 bit value. I am displaying it here in a decimal format and also R logic and XR logic. Then addition also we are doing and NOR operation. As I said, you can increase the number of operations over here. Uh, if you require any other gates also, you can do that. And also if you want multiplication exponential and also if you want uh, modulus division, you can increase it further since it is um, facilitate 16 ALU operations. Here we are just restricting to nine such operations, right? So let us discuss more about this test bench in the next video. Thank you. Please subscribe to the channel for more videos on verification.